Hello and welcome to another F Expansion Strobe 2 tutorial. In this video I want to take a look at some very particular transmod sources, specifically the sources found in the random menu. The sources in this menu can help to inject some organic randomness into your patches. So I have a patch here which is a fairly simple pad. And as it stands this pad is quite uh, static, it's quite digital sounding and we're going to use the random modulation sources to add a bit of organic depth to this patch. So first of all we're going to try RAND1. I'm going to apply this to a number of parameters, so maybe some filter cutoff, some stack and detune in the oscillator section, some noise, and some of the analog parameter from the VCA section. And all of these combined are going to help to make each note just a little bit different when I play. So you should be able to hear there that every note had a slightly different character to it. There was more noise coming in, more low frequency rumble from the analog parameter here. And that's all fine, but if you were looking closely what you'll notice is that the amount of randomness applied to each of these parameters was the same every time. So if the random parameter was high then all of these parameters would have gone high. What this means is that the RAND1 and 2 sources, here's RAND1 and here's RAND2, apply a single random number to every parameter that they're applied to. So I'm going to switch this now to MRAND1. MRAND stands for multiple randoms. So when I select this and play, pay particular attention to what's happening in each of the individual parameters and you'll notice that each one of them gets a different random modulation. And I think this particular modulation source is much better suited to emulating old analog synthesizers because every part of the synthesizer, the oscillator, the filter, the amplitude, the noise source, they can all be given slightly different random variations. You'll also notice in the submenu that there's a 1 and 2 version for each of the modulation sources. RAND1 is based on a sample and hold circuit of a white noise source, so every time there's a new note the random modulation source takes a value between 0 and 1 from a white noise source. The RAND2 takes its value from a pink noise source and what this really means in practice is that the range of the randomness will be slightly less on RAND2 than on RAND1. So MRAND1 and 2 are also the same, they're based on white and pink noise. VMRAND1, uh, I'm not going to actually demonstrate here uh, this is a slightly less useful modulation source, but uh, you might find some use for it. VMRAND produces a random value on every session. So when I load up strobe, VMRAND will produce a random value and it'll hold that random value until next time I open up the synthesizer. So it's a uh, one random value for an entire session. Another useful source is drift. You can think of drift as a very slow random LFO. Uh, imagine an old analog synthesizer that takes you know 20 minutes or half an hour to actually warm up its circuits and during that 20 minutes various things drift, the tuning, the filter uh, pitch and things like that. So that's where drift is quite useful. 
And finally in the random menu you'll find these two noise sources. They are based on white and pink noise for uh, one and two and they're really useful for adding some proper noisy grit into something. Um, if I multiply that by 0.1 so we're getting a very small amount of noise you can see the filter there jittering with the noise let's increase the amount And there you go, those are the random modulation sources in F Expansion's Strobe 2. Join me soon for another tutorial. Mm.